ETAs, and maybe we got some questions that we can clarify and stuff. If that's all right with you, I guess uh, one of the things that I've thought about if you're in a pool like that, and uh, are, you, you are subject to, if there's other disasters with of other members in your pool, your premiums could go up, right, through assessments and... Sure, there, yeah, I mean, with, um, so, yeah, I mean, as, as with, you know, if a commercial insurer has bad losses, you know, in Kansas or even outside of Kansas, they could raise rates. Similarly, you know, it's possible that you know, as a pool we had substantial losses, you know, that that, that would cause an increase. A um, couple things to protect against that. One is reinsurance. So we, you know, uh, we purchase reinsurance. Uh, we don't take on all the risk. So when we say, for example, we have two million on limits for those extraterritorial claims on liability. We don't take on the whole thing. We, we, we actually retain the first 400,000 as a pool, and then we purchase reinsurance and like that. So if it's a catastrophic loss that goes above, you know, that 400,000, we're transferring that cost to our reinsurer. Um, so that protects the pool's assets in the event of a major loss. Similar on the property side. And, and this is no different than the commercial market does. They buy excess insurance over for a certain, certain limit too. We do the same thing. We have a, we have excess policy over 650,000 that picks up coverage just from that on. So, so in the event of that, are you reassess that the same year? Oh, okay. So yeah, one of the differences. So let's say we, I mean, we had some wiped out ten counties in west of us. I mean, major, major claims. Mm -hmm. Are we reassess that in the same same year? Is it the following premium awards? The, the difference between pooling and commercial insurance is pools are or can be accessible. So yes, you, a pool could go back and set, and the members could decide, yeah, we're going to assess ourselves for uh, this current year, you know, an additional amount. That could happen. Um, but again, the, two, the things that protect against that are reinsurance. There probably wouldn't be a need to do that because if you had a county, three counties wiped out by a tornado, you're going into your reinsurance layer. You're not tapping into your pool's net assets. You're paying 400000 for that occurrence, or maybe three occurrences of 400000 It's three different tornadoes set more than 72 hours apart. you got 400, 400, and 400. Well, actually, it's on the property side. So for us, that would only be 250, 250, 250. So we have a 750 exposure on three major tornadoes that maybe wiped out three different counties. We have a $750,000 loss. What are our net assets? $16 million. There would be absolutely no need to assess in that situation. You transfer the cost above the 250 for each occurrence to your reinsurer, and you've also got 60 million in that assets uh, to, to protect against uh, to protect against that. So, um, see if there's one continuous storm, maybe one 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 one, 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 one occurrence. One occurrence. Uh, it have to be 72 hours apart, or not to be one. Occurrence. You have 16 million dollars of assets in your. Total in your pool? Net assets. So hours. surplus. Surplus 12 in ours. We have about 25 million in assets, but we have been surplus for 16. And that's really been, you know, the strength of the pool. I mean, we, we, we conservatively project our, our losses so that we can, you know, not only pay our losses, pay our overhead, pay our reinsurance, but then put money away for contingency. And that allows us, again, to provide those stable rates for the members. We don't have to, if we do have, and we do have bad loss years, you know, it happens where one member gets that major hailstorm one year, gets another member the next year, but we don't have to go back and assess, and we don't even have to go back and charge, you know, 10, 20 percent more the next year to all the members to cover that, because we've got that, that build up. How many times have you had to go back? Never. We've never assessed. And that's the board, you know, some will criticize and say, well, 16 million, you don't need that much in the assets, you don't need that much in surplus. That's the reason the board wanted it. Because the board, again, this is a member-driven organization, their county is just like you, and they're saying, look, the most important thing to us is you keep our costs stable. 
that's what we want more than anything. We want the stable cons, we want the broad coverage, we want the premium limits, but most importantly, we want to have the stable cost. And if you can also give us these services that we need, because we don't have the staffing to do the risk management, uh, provide all these risk management services, and you can also provide us with those uh, to help us keep our losses under control, that would be another benefit. And so that's what we've done. Does the pool cover differently as far as complaints to the state insurance commissioner? Uh, no. I mean, you could make, for example, like you could make a bad faith claim against the pool um, if you didn't like how a claim was handled, just, just as you could a commercial insurer. Uh, the Kansas Insurance Department audits us every year. It's three years. Um, so we're audited by them. Uh, we report our financials to them quarterly. So we're looking at our financial statements on a regular basis. So in that sense, we're regulated. In some states, schools aren't regulated. Right? I previously worked for an insurance company in California. They self-regulate through the accreditation process. Um, actually works very effectively. But in other states like Kansas, yeah, there's oversight. And looking through your quote, I guess what I was, I don't follow is the, the premium, how you derive the premium based off our schedules. I mean, it, it seems really, really cheap for what we're insuring. We have rates that we file with the insurance department uh, that are based on, well, they were originally based on commercial rates, uh, but we find those rates to be in line with our, our pool's loss experience. So uh, we're very comfortable with the rating that we apply. There might be a given year where, like on the liability side, uh, you'll see, for example, our law enforcement premium is probably higher, is my guess, than what your commercial care is right. That's because that's where we see most of our losses, um, you know, within the liability program. We see the, one of the large losses on the law enforcement side, so that rating tends to be higher uh, than our other liability. But yeah, we're very comfortable with the rates that we have. And you, you wouldn't get to that net asset position if they were in Well, I know that, <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about your position. I'm worried about yeah. <laughs> this side of the table. Right. <laughs> Any I guess my thoughts on it is I don't like the fact that we're not protecting <clears throat> on the backside if something drastic happens. I mean, I mean, we're, I know. I just I don't like that feeling. I mean, that, that, mean to, hedge, to hedge, to hedge, to mm hedge -hmm. to know that if there was something that, that happened, mm -hmm. that that there is a chance that we would be reassessed, or you know, and, and we're we're hedging our loss if. You know, by by staying where we're at, in my opinion, I mean, because we know this is what it's going to cost us on any given year, no matter what happens. This is what our cost, fixed costs, are going to be. I mean, we don't have a line item in our budget to be reassessed if, in the case of a, of a natural disaster, that's over your limits. You know, this question. I've been doing this for 20 years. This question's come up for 20 years. We've never had an assessment. Well, I know, years. I know. You, you're sitting here today in the middle of December, and tell me never. <laughs> no, I can't tell you never. <laughs> right, never, right, never, right. never, 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 we did some changing on our bylaws to allow us, because we're going to have a bad year every year. We'll, all insurance companies have a bad year. So we can move assets from one year to the next if we need to move to cover some losses. 2014 is not looking at a very good year, but we've got the assets to move in case we need to cover losses. And still got the, got the, uh, the value in the pool to maintain the pool. I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's no different than saying, well, how do you know your commercial insurer doesn't fail? How do you know they don't get downgraded this year and suddenly they're they're underwater? I mean that could happen. It's happened. It has happened. 
there's companies like Kemper, and we could, we could go through a whole laundry list of commercial insurers who have gone out of business and left claimants high and dry. And the states have, have, have to come in. <coughs> State guarantee funds have to come in and pay those claims, and that happens too. So it's, to me, it's the same argument. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this a, a worse scenario? I, I don't know. I think it's a better scenario because, again, we take a low retention as a pool. We transfer that risk to a reinsurer that guarantees we get those payments made. And we have a strong net asset position to keep us from having mm -hmm. the assessment. An assessment would have to come from membership. They have to vote on it for it to, for it to happen. When I started in this business, there was seven different companies in Topeka that I could have worked for. There's one now, and it only has like three employees left. I, I worked for the AIG, the New Hampshire, uh, which was a fantastic company. AIG came in and destroyed the whole company because all they wanted was the paper to write on. From a, from a whole office full of people, they're down to one person in Kansas City that write the paper. That's all they do. So, Insurance companies have gone down year after year after year. You realize this really got started <clears throat> back in the late 80s because the counties were having trouble getting coverages. And the KAC and the state legislature got together and put this through. And they really based it off the New Mexico pool. The New Mexico pool was already up and going. But that, that was the reason they got started, KAC and the state legislators. County commissioners. So, if there is a need for an assessment, then it would go to the board of directors first, it would. and then <clears throat> then it would go to the membership to vote on. For vote. It, no, our, in our case, our board. The board makes the board the decision. Decide. Vote. Yeah, the board could decide. They they would look at it and say, you know. We could do a, we'll do an assessment. And for example, it's the board that decided to do the rate stabilization program. They looked at it and said, let's use our net assets, a portion of those, uh, to pay back to the members a contribution credit and uh, a rate stabilization. So the board makes those. I'm looking at your map of uh, counties that aren't in your pool. Mm -hmm. uh, why are some of the larger counties not in your pool? Um, Typically, the larger counties will uh, self-insure, so they'll they'll take on a large self-insured retention. It could be five hundred thousand, could be a million. They don't want first. We're basically providing first dollar coverage. They don't want first dollar coverage. They're willing. They feel like they can save more money if they take on that risk themselves, self-fund it. Um, I'm not familiar uh, yet with each of those larger counties like Johnson or Wyandotte, but. Typically, that's how that it, it works, and they'll, they'll self-administer claims, or they'll hire out a TPA and do their own claims that way, um, and they'll, they'll self-fund uh, up to a very high level. As far as work comp is concerned, Cedric has their own program, Shawnee kind of got their own program, Douglas, Riley, Wyandotte, Riley, Wyandotte, who else? There's five or six, there's six that I can think of at the top, they have their own program. If you've got enough money to put it in the state, you, you just file with the state of Kansas and you have to be able to put, uh, uh, what's 250000 in the bank to cover as a starting reserve, I think it's more than now. It can be done, it's just a matter of having a bunch of money to stick away. Well, they're smaller counties too, I was just <laughs> curious of, I mean, it seems like the majority of them are big, big ones, or bigger ones. I mean, just for example, we're talking about Salina, I think, this, this morning, and in the past, I mean, they're certainly appropriate size for us, we think, uh, but there's a county that thinks they're too big for us. So, you know, you get into a Johnson County, and they definitely are going to think they're too big for first dollar. Um, now, they're in the work comp pool. So, yeah, they're in the work comp pool. Yeah. Okay, you can run either way. You can do both of us or either one of us. We've got some counties that just have the KCAP pool. Dark shaded ones and one in both. That's a trustees. No, that's yeah. a trust. Our trustee comes. Uh, Steve Garden came up. Steve from trustee down there. Mm -hmm. One of the things we've done was we set it up so each road district, of the six road districts, each one of them has a representative that goes to meetings. 
And so we have a trustee out of each one of those, then we have one at large, which is Michelle Garrett out of the Morris County. Which, on this map, which ones are are just K-Works or k -Camp? Do you have a other maps with you? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Is there a bunch of them or just a few that's not? There's Celine, we have Marion, Carl said and that pooling is something, and we talked about this, but that is, you know, really arose out of the fact that the commercial market couldn't provide those stable rates. And in fact, we're, we're wholesale canceling public entities, uh, dramatic or dramatically increasing their premiums, and public entities just said enough. We need, we need another solution. These things got started some as early as the late 70s, but most of them in the early 80s on in the early 90s. Um, I've been around the pooling industry for close to 20 years actually 20 years ago. And um, you know, I worked in the state of South Dakota, which set up its own uh, public entity pool for liability for all the state agencies and institutions, the universities, parks, prisons. Um, um, my old boss, the risk manager from South Dakota, now runs the South Dakota Public Insurance Alliance. It covers, I think, every city in the state except one. Um, very successful pool. Um, I worked uh, for a pool out in California, 22 municipalities, uh, one of I think, 80 pools in that state that cover counties, cities, school districts. Really has become the model. Um, I worked for the California Association of Joint Powers Authorities, which um, was the accrediting body for the pools. And I used to go around and accredit pools. And I can tell you, K-Camp, and one of the reasons I came to this position was I was so impressed with how well this organization is run. It's well funded. Um, very professional staff, very engaged board, outstanding service providers. Um, it's really a great model in the industry, and uh, you'll be well served by it. Yeah. Any other questions? I can't think of any. Thank you. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Thanks for yeah, giving us a chance and hope to have you as a member. Make the best decision we can. Thank you. <laughs>
as well as the premium plans um, that the assessments can plan. And at the end of the day, the board is accountable to that. Are you I think that yes, they will do the assessment. There's no money left. There will be an assessment. An insurance company buys reinsurance on the side. But you still have a scenario where there is a lot of claims that you can get at that 69. Even if you do have a cap. And an insurance company buys your insurance on the So yes, you know, a lot of companies have changed over time. That's just part of our world now. Um, and a lot of the, the rules have changed and so you know, taking So it's a you know, it's a difficult decision. <laughs> this insurance thing is a monster in my mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, not only for the county, but just in, in, in general. general. Yeah. Well, it, it is a difficult scenario because you are listening, and there are so many things that can be distorted. And so you can say one thing, and maybe that's not. So I think, you know, if you, um, that's kind of the dilemma of it. And yes, there, are, there have been a lot of counties that have jumped on the board because of the premium savings. My concern is, is at the end of the day, if something really serious happens in the state, you know, where will that all be? So if you could guarantee it, if you could say it never was going to happen, that's clear. Yeah. That's yeah. part of the insurance, though. Mm -hmm. Can you really fully fund for every ex and unexpected thing and that could happen? And, and that's and, true. And you're that's be true. dirt poor if you do that. Yes, and it depends on how strong the county is. You know, those large counties, they do self-insure some of that, but they also have other policies on the back end. So they are buying an insurance product, even though they're self-insuring to mm -hmm. a certain so that's not an every kind of thing. So if you are a strong county and they have the funds to be able to put that back, then you can know, do that. So, but I too would like to keep the account. You know, I think I've worked through the years with a long time. Yes, you know, there is a, there is a premium difference. My concern is it's Well, I was saying what she's doing is we do the same thing with health insurance. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. you, know, and it's, you know, and we're rolling the dice on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're controlling that within your group. Right. You're not controlling right. that right. with understand. all of the counties and yeah. the entity. And so you have some control over that. And so that is correct. So if you're assessed because of three counties in the southeast, mm -hmm. you know, that's out of your control. If you're assessed for what you have. So. Okay, now so let's think about it for a little bit. Okay. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What is I on the health insurance? <laughs> then, you know, Talked about the laser policy last week. Mm -hmm. Assessed 50 grand at the end of the year. I mean, what we, we don't have a budget. No, but we thought that we couldn't come up with 
Well, no, I know that, but I'm just saying that but all the other counties are in the same situation. Well, I know yeah. that, but yeah, that's the I idea just, of a pool is to I spread know. the risk. <laughs> I know. I just don't like the smoky the, mirror thing. That is I, the direction most people are going. To right. You know, I don't like it, but it's just just think of your own insurance. If you insured every stinking thing you had, you just can't afford it. There are certain things that you can probably afford to lose, and there are certain things you can't afford. Like when the tornado went through, I didn't have the replacement cost on very many things, but what I didn't have, I could probably afford to lose, you know. Right. And you can just insure yourself out of the ball game if you insure everything. For but in my mind, in my mind, what we have is not broke. No. And they're both and there is a there work. is a huge difference in the premiums. But there's just something about that deal that I don't trust or like. And I, I don't want to hedge. I'd rather hedge it off in the front than I would at the back if we did have something happen and say, well, you guys told us that this is what, how we're going to be covered, and now we're not. And then have to come up, if there is a huge disaster, and then have to come up with a your assessment. With an, with an assessment. I know that didn't happen in 20 years, but, but <laughs> even if it did happen, would your assessment for each county, how much would it take to reach $34,000? Well, $16 million overhead, it's going to walk through yeah, that pretty good. You're going to spread that over the whole well, well, I know. It's probably not going to get to that. Yeah. It, it, but there's no, you can't say it would never happen. Right. Yeah. I don't know. My feelings is still a wrap. That's my feeling. I would think it's public money will switch and so I like the security of a, of a commercial company, but I don't like the premium. If we have many counties, 60 counties is in this organization. 61. Uh, well, there's not as many as fake campus as they were. So. Significant dollars, and uh, it nice to be there. go through the scenario if there was a tornado go through two counties, <coughs> what your assessment would be spread out over all those counties. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen that, but I'm guessing. It's nice to have two options. Yeah. It's just a matter of making a decision on which option to take. And, and like I say, I like, this, I like the security of the commercial insurance. And I feel that KCAMP can offer that security at a lower price. But when it comes to, to the assessment, then I'm not comfortable with it. That's what I'm not comfortable with. No matter, I mean, if the, the fault security is nothing on the back side. That's, but they said they did go, if they got to that limit, then they would, they would go out and buy insurance. Yes. I would think they'd want to avoid at all costs reassessments. I mean, yeah, the way to do it. Except to do reassessments. That'd be a killer for business. Well, you want to think about it for another hour? <laughs> Make the decision before the, before the end of the meeting. I didn't entertain a motion now, or we can.
Well, I'll make the motion that we go with with KPM. Okay. I would second that motion. We have a motion and a second to go with uh, K Camp and K Work. Right? And K Work. We're a property insurance, so I'll say aye. 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 I talked to him yesterday and I, he said he talked, you talked I called him yesterday, yeah. And I've talked to those too. So, um, we got two letters here. Okay, now, are you ready? Sorry. Yes, sorry. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Dr. Fritz Farmer as Deputy Coroner and Doris Tompkins as Special Deputy Coroner. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to appoint Dr. Farmer as Deputy Coroner and Doris Tompkins as Special Deputy Coroner. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Walter Ridge License. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, we have the Cyril Mont Beverage License on Kansas Co It's a renewal. Check is attached. Yes. $100. Yes. I think we should approve the ceremony members' license for our campus co op. I second it. Yeah, we have a motion to second. Check the right. serial mall beverage license for the campus co op. All favor say aye. 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 This is for the short stop out there. Yeah. 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 You sign there, and then you have to sign the uh, uh, after you sign it. Are you coming up? No. Dang it. Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes of December 3rd. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for December 3rd. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.
options that we discussed last week. Um, there was a I I I I I I I I I Josh Austin's resignation and the trustee. Yeah. No, clerk. The clerk. But it's still a trustee. I second that. What time should this go? East Peace Cooper. We have a motion and a second to accept Josh Austin's uh, resignation as township clerk since he's already a township trustee. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Do that later. No, you do that. After the first year. Ken Pipe is, he'll, yeah, January 12th, we'll appoint Ken Pipe. Um, we have tax roll corrections. Though. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Okay.
Coast Bed for RSI Communications security for $2,032.65. I'll second that motion. Okay. Motion and a second to accept the bid from RSI Communications for the radio for $2,032.65. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, I'll just kind of bring you a few things that's went on. Uh, Dad and I attended a meeting in November. It's been a while since I've been here. That's how everything's going electronic, you know, spill reporting. Anytime if you guys have an issue of control, a uh, burn ban, we report it to the state electronically now. I mean, just, every, you know, everything's going in electronic age, so there's so much being done about that. So we attended that class. I also attended a school of Doris in Wichita on pandemics. We got to see everything that's available to Stafford County if the need arises, and it's pretty amazing the state of Kansas owns, let me tell you, stuff I never even dreamed of. Then we'll go to the, um, on the phone system, the cell phone system, who's in charge of the county phone plan? Just each department. The reason why, since we're going electronic, you know, that laptop that the county has is, that's the kind of computer guy's name, Dad, that tried to work on it, Randy. Randy. And it just does not work fast, so I thought about purchasing an iPad, which is, you know, well within my spending limit. But I'm trying to decide whether it's, I don't know what the data costs, that's what I'm trying to find out. If it's each county deal, if, whether it's cheaper to use, or use a smartphone with the data side of it, or to get an iPad with cell coverage built into it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's Doug, okay. if you need the GPS on it, you'll have to go with, the, you can't go with the Wi-Fi only. You'll have to do it with the... The 3G or the 4G, I have found that out. So okay. if you need a GPS capable of so the Wi-Fi, I'm asking for permission to either, in, whichever way is the cheapest, to increase the data plan, you know, on the cell phone if that'll work, or to get an iPad with cell built into it to keep in that vehicle. <coughs> I know, but when you enter a cell phone plan, right. you're right. entering a contract, and I don't have the authority to do that. That's why I'm asking. So you don't, you don't know where you're going to go iPad? I just want to find out which way is going to be the okay. cheapest. That's I would ask them to, to not go on a, like a two or five year contract, just purchase the iPad outright. Right. I mean, that Please. way you don't have to worry about a contract. That's right. This way it is. It's not it's working. Just monthly data charges on it. Okay. That's 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 with it that point. Because you know, either way is going to work, just whichever right. way is the yeah. cheapest. to have a contract with us to go ahead and inquire and find out what you think would work, work the best. Okay. And then that brings us to the final item. <laughs> oh, it's not enough. Oh. <laughs> no, we're, we're not buying tires. tires. <laughs> <laughs> no tires. No tires. No tires. No tires. <laughs> you know, here a while back when I had asked, you know, we got with Mike the kind of discussion of future plans for Stafford County on a radio system. Um, and you know, like we talked about the first time, I remember Clayton said, oh my God, here we go to environmental study, we had to put up a tower. We have checked with about every tower owner around here, and there are no towers for us to get on. But, we're thinking we might, could possibly, we don't know for sure yet without talking to tower people, but extend the tower at the road department. Make that a taller tower. We thought about the one at the EMS building, because it's actually a heavier tower, but we don't know if we have enough room to guide down there. So that's kind of open to open. That's the part we're still working on. Mike came up with the plan. Uh, the plan kind of includes an initial purchase of stuff, which is why we got the fire department here. They have their own idea there too. So I guess I'll turn it over to Mike, and if you want to kind of explain to him what you've come up with. And well, okay, I got a quote from uh, what we were explaining to him the system. I yeah, the system we talked about, what we think is going to be the best deal would be a system that's located at a single site, one tower, of course. Uh, five UHF repeaters get on the UHF side, so you're going to have better overall coverage, especially with portable radios. Uh, you're going to have more, most of the counties around are UHF, there's still a few VHF, so for interoperability, that's a better deal too. So I've got quotes from Kenwood that are pretty firm on the equipment, <clears throat> and then including uh, the antennas and cabling and that. Uh, this does not include any installation labor in the, the antennas or, or setup on that. But, uh, 
and, or license it. So, uh, I mean, basically that's it. So okay, I, I guess this gives you the, the kind of let them know that our system would stay intact. It like it yes. is right now until right. you know we're totally switched over, which we said we could do over years. You know, time the road department switched over to UHF radios, everybody else did, so it's not a big upfront purchase. The system can run conventional, which means analog. They, yeah, analog, they could use radios right off the bat. They would not be digital, so dispatch to be able to hear them everything. And then once all the departments get switched over to the UHF radios, then we can go ahead and flip the switch digital so the next time the narrow band we're compliant. Hundred percent compliant. That's right. So yeah, it's it's got several capabilities built into it. The system's capable of trunking, which I don't think you would ever need to do, or probably would never do. Uh, and uh, so, by getting that extra height on the tower as well as being UHF, you know, it's going to help your overall coverage in the county, uh, and you're going to be set for the future for any migration to digital or the, what I call very or super narrow band. You know. By the FCC, so the way the system would work is there wouldn't be people carrying pagers and radios. Wouldn't have to. That's right. Right, and that cuts the expense down by two right. pieces of equipment yeah. everybody carries. It'd all be one unit. Yeah. But anyhow, the price on that came just for the infrastructure. And this, this is all the transmitters, repeaters, <coughs> everything but the tower and installation. Right. Yeah, that's right. And licensing. Yeah. Licensing. <coughs> and licensing. But Kenwood's bid came in at 46 to 4016. That's where I'm stopping because these guys have came up with a plan on how to take care of it. And is that all the radios? Too, <clears> no, this no, is no, none no. of the radios. This is just your main infrastructure, which is five repeaters. So we have five repeater channels. And then didn't you say also if the county went like this, eventually in time we'd have some trade in value on equipment as we. Everybody that switched over and we could get rid of some stuff, there would be value to that equipment. Yeah, all the newer stuff that's never been capable. That's right. That we've yeah. already purchased yeah. on the VHF side, there would be some value to it. Yes. Yeah. To get rid of it. <coughs> when, uh, so we got our all all this equipment is also is uh, warranty by Kenwood for three years. Uh, all their uh, digital radios are warranty for three years. And if you were to get a quote from, say, Motorola, a competition, of course, um, on a system that is comparable, you know, we compare apples to apples, okay, what capabilities are and stuff, you're generally going to be looking at twice as price or more, maybe even three times as much. So. We've got enough problems with Motorola in the past, <laughs> and we're still dealing with Motorola on our Channel 2 tower that we want to get away from. It. That seems to have one guy to be able to work on all of our channels, and so that's called Mike to work on the Sheriff's Office channel, or Motorola can work on Channel 2, Mike can work on Channel 3. Let's just do it. And the reason we're trying to build off an existing tower is because towers are expensive. Just a 300-foot tower with LED lighting on it that includes no building. That wasn't even construction of it, was That's it? That's right. It was just the price of the tower, 60 grand. So we can extend the tower. You know, if the one at the road department will work, we can extend that tower a whole lot cheaper. Like Phil said, it would require a new building at the bottom, and we'd probably have, we'd have to light it. And we go up any higher. So how many feet do you want to increase the tower? want to do as much as possible and that's where I'd have to have the tower guy look at it and say, you know, the, one of the limiting factors, there's two limiting factors, main limiting factors is the existing size of the tower right now, which is around 25, I think you can turn we think we think on it. So there's a limit on the height on that by run specifications. And then uh, towers typically need to be guided at 80% of their height. So however much property is out there, you know, however far we go out and guide points. You can sometimes short guide depending on the wind load of the antennas you have on the tower, so it might be able to do that. But if you can get another 50 feet out of that, if you thought it was uh, 190 I, feet or I so, that, that right there would be a big improvement. And we know feet. the county road department tower is guide. <clears throat> yeah, there are guide points on that, right? Yes. I thought there was. Yeah. Yes. The one at the EMS building? It's 190 feet now. 199, I believe. So go above that, then we've got to light it, uh, light it, and get it uh, an FCC uh, site number four. So. But you know, the tower deal we're kind of putting off until next year, you know, after the first year, see what we can come up with on it. Because, you know, if we can extend that road department tower, that's going to be pretty reasonable in the tower world. Oh, you know, gosh, yeah, compared to a new tower, yeah. yeah. We're kind of throwing the new tower out the window. We're trying to come up with anything we can because that's just crazy to have to do that kind of money. But anyhow, 
the fire chiefs. It is their, now their turn. <laughs> they have come up with a way or an idea of how they would like to finance this initial purchase, you know, yet this year. And then next year we can start building onto it again. We had talked about, you know, we, we had a chunk left from our budget to go ahead and purchase this. We've also talked about even looking at about purchasing out of our, our reserve equipment fund, which is technically equipment that would be used for the fire department as well as law enforcement. Having the fire department cover the initial cost of it and have each county department pay us so much back, that way we're all even in the So When they can budget it in. When, when we can budget it, I mean, it's obviously not going to be, you know, we expect to pay us this amount of money in six months. I mean, but we understand that there's a problem, and we, the sheriff's office and, and fire EMS are the main users of your, your portable system, especially with using portable radios, and we're to the point that we can't get out in certain spots. And we can't even get out in certain spots in, in regular patrol cars, the tallest antennas we can put on the car. So if we have a problem, we need to get it addressed. What departments are going to be paying you back? We figured probably the sheriff's office and probably wrote the bridge a little bit, but any mess. So but we, we need to get the initial push out of the way. And, and I, I agree with Mike one hundred percent. I mean under roll is gonna be two times this if not three times this higher. That's why we didn't even seek to uh, bid for them. Because it's so proprietary and the, the only group of guys that come out and work on it, and it may be you call on a Saturday night, and it might be next Saturday before they get that work on it. Mike's real good about hey, if it's broken down on Saturday night, get there, I'll get to it, I'll get to it as quick as I can. Which he's been down a couple times <laughs> to every pair of the sheriff's office. So. so, just to clarify, you're talking about paying for this out of the fire? Mm -hmm. That initial part. The, the initial, whatever, the 40, 46,000, 46, 246, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, 46, so, and hopefully, you know, if we have to go through a new tire, we have to go through a new tire. We have other ways. We, we'll figure something out. We, we fought this back and forth for three months before we brought it back to you. So. And another way to look at it, too, is you're going to have better coverage, even if you didn't. Let's say you, let's say you went on this tower. I, I really think try to get more height, but even if you were to put this system on that tower at the heights it's at, it's going to be better overall than what you've got. So. That doesn't include any money to update the tower then. No, this is just the initial, the initial cost. Wait, it's hard to like. All, all, our, all the guts and all the other. What are some of the rental charges that, like Verizon or something like that? Uh, <coughs> you want to definitely you tell wanna, you about that? Yeah. He brought besides, Verizon's tower. Besides, right some of the companies not even wanting to let him bay on the towers, they, they're all horrendous on the amounts they want. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact figures, but they they typically, typically they want about two thousand dollars a month to have somebody on their tower. And then one of the companies I checked with, uh, not only that, but uh, they wanted you to pay like twenty-five hundred dollar fee, what they call a preparation fee for you know getting all the paperwork done, which is an agreement, a simple agreement. Uh, provide your own electricity, provide your own building. Won't let you in their building. Uh, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. And for the hype we were needing, Check me. Yeah. they were all taken, and they wouldn't even rent space. So oh, that's, yeah, that's the other thing. Well, yeah. the a pipeline yeah. didn't allow anybody on theirs. So. Yeah, they didn't want anybody on their towers. They said, even if we did, it'd take a year to get the agreement done. And, and uh, yeah, and, okay. Why don't they just say no? <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah. It should be that simple. Yeah. What if the landowner put it in the contract to allow you to do that, though? Well, yeah, that would be an exception, you know, where Pratt County got real lucky back when it was Kansas Cellular years ago and they put up a tower south of Pratt there on the county property where the county was smart and saying, hey, we, we want two spots on that tower for intent for no charge because you're on our property. Well, they got that, so they, they lucked out. There might be a new one right out. Mm -hmm. There might be a new one right a mile north and west of town. Oh, really? 
person in Pratt County that, uh, you know, of course it was Kansas Cellular and still, uh, it may have been like Mark McManaman or somebody that, uh, that uh, you know, kind of worked that out. I'm not sure, but I can find out. But, you know, if, if this new round of super narrow banding goes through, our radio system is going to be chopped. You know, we won't have the coverage that we do have now with the current system. And then we're going to be back to square one, and have to spend a whole lot of money and time. And I think if it if it if they do uh, another narrow band round of the six point two five kilohertz, that uh, I don't know that your motor oil radios you have are even capable of that. They probably have to. These are capable. These are capable. Some, some of them are. Some, some, of, some of them are. are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very very few of them are, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and you know when we're talking about cost of, of mobile units and portable units. We're in the same ballpark as what it cost for a motor roller radio, and we can do a few more functions than what we can with the front roller. Uh, especially on, on the portable side of it, the portable, like I said, will be used as a, can be used as a radio for pager option. So, I mean, one well, of the cheapest mobile radio that Mike and Price did me a while back, of course, you know, prices on them fluctuate, was 357.28. That's the cheapest mobile. So, you know, and certain departments would need. Certain radios. I mean, you know, like Phil, you know, for his guys, if you want a portable radio, you wouldn't need a radio that does paging and, and all that. You just need a radio that you talk. So. And actually, on these series, these Next Edge series of Kenwoods, even their basic radios have the paging capability. So. Well, that's what we're proposing. Plan kind of try to come back in steps. The problem is this first thing's a big one. So how soon are you going to start these <coughs> changeovers? Well, we won't be able to change over anything until we get it installed somewhere, which, you know, depends on the county tower. That's why we thought we'd put the tower deal off till next year, you know, when everybody has new budgets to see what they can. And, you know, come up and talking about budgets, you know, and I'm kind of between a rock and a hard spot here, but I have always budgeted over there so much a year to come to Stafford County for dispatching or radio usage. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the state's been talking for years about start charging user fees. I have 1-800 radio. I was getting ready to purchase one for the car over there also because we deal with Reno County so much over there. They're all 800. We can't talk to them. It's Tom and them found out when they were chasing a murder suspect. My unit couldn't talk to Reno County. Tom was tagging along doing all the radio communication in my office. There. But, you know, for every year, for like the last several years, I've budgeted $2,000. I don't know if any other towns in Stafford County have even thought about that. But I always I have for a long time. So, you know, I would think that would only be fair, you know, if I'm going to have two vehicles on this system, I should have some ownership in it too. I should be required to pay a little bit. That's my opinion. One thing, one thing that would have to be done for the very first if you decide to do this is to get the licensing process yeah, so started. The frequencies. Yeah, so because Kenwood can't get the system program set up tuned until they have the frequencies. And once they have the frequencies, they can do that. And then once you have the license, you have a year's time to uh, construct what they call construction. Yeah, to uh, have the system in operation. Well, you could have the system in operation even if it wasn't going to be on the uh, site that you're going to end up on. You know, if, if it just needed to be temporary, you could have it operating. But you have a year for it to actually be in operation without having to worry about losing your license. So. Can we start the permit process without? Mm -hmm. They, as far as the licensing, yeah, sure, yeah. I know when we had all these meetings, we was trying to divide it up into steps, you know, and we knew the, the main infrastructure was going to be the largest step, you know, and then for years, I mean, it can be used 
independently, or some if one of them's got enough budget. Whoever the smallest departments are that use them, and the smallest amount of radios will probably be the first ones to be able to switch because they're going to be able to afford to switch over. But, you know, some of the large ones, it's going to take them several years just to get the mobile radio bank, you know, built up big enough to cover everybody. That's a lot of radios. That is. So that's why I'm saying, you know, if we're maybe looking at four or five years. When you figure the number in the whole county. Yeah. yeah. When you go total overall number, yeah. That's why we were trying to build into it. Huh? Maybe 100 some? I'll be going out. You counted everyone in the county. You counted the whole road department radios, fire, and EMS. Well, unfortunately, I think you're looking at over 100. Well over 100. But then again, at the same time, if you if the FCC does another narrow banding, they're going to have to replace them anyways. So. Yeah. And that's what we're just trying to avoid is one big major step and try to figure some baby steps. <laughs> but this here is a process that's going to be real probably be over two to three years before it's all said and finally done. It's just what we're looking for the future to start now so it's not so much a, down the road when it, oh, it hits us and then we're without communication so we have to come up with say $250,000 just to even get coverage. This here is just a little bit. We're paying part now, part later. Slow, slower process. Because I think I'd put in, in the fire department next year, I'd put it in for at least another 800 radio. And I could take that budget out for that, for that 800 radio. We could, use, we could buy a few of these radios this year, just to have back in stock. So, I mean, it's, it, it's going to be a time and process, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Now, <clears throat> are the 800 radios going away? No. So, no. so what if they, they narrow the band? The 800 radios are capable of conforming to that band? Yeah, well, the 800s are fully digital radio. That, uh, They're able oh, to that as far as narrow band, it won't apply on the 800 frequency? It only, the narrow banding applies by just between 150 megahertz and 470 or 500 megahertz. So 800 megahertz, uh, it's already... So as long set. as the radio is digital? No. No? No, not well, necessarily. 800s are already digital. They're already digital, yeah. that's right. So, yeah. But these, these are all analog and digital. Okay. So, yeah. so and I'm just, just looking here like, so I like these next, it is. These next yeah. edge mobile yeah. 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 is, the average next edge yeah. mobile here is, uh, you can buy five, depending on which model you want, you can buy five to seven of those for the price of one of the motor rolls, 800. Is it a tower somewhere? Mm -hmm. I mean, this initial purchase and something we want to do once we figure out where the what tower we're going to use. I mean, I don't see buying the equipment if we don't know if we're going to use Phil's Yeah, I mean, we do have to know the, the final tower gonna, size before they can start. The that's why we're just trying to break it down in sticks. Because, right. boy, it'd be hard to swallow a tower and this major equipment at one time. Mm -hmm. That's why we try and break it down into main infrastructure this year. I mean, how soon could we know if we could use the Phillips Tower down there? Probably within a couple of weeks, I can get maybe even by next. Well, you week, said it can be used now at the height that is now. Yeah, yeah. It'd be right. nice to go higher, but it could be used yeah. at the height that is now. That's right. And He's actually, got the best you tower and best reception of anybody. He, his yeah. guys can talk where we can't <laughs> on our channel yeah. one. And we do. And and actually, actually, and you, there's been times we switch over to him so we can talk to people. You can use that tower <laughs> drop this price you get out a little bit have you can't talk to anybody. Anybody. That's when you switch over. I don't care what I'm doing what I'm not there anymore. <laughs> That's why we just try to break it down the best Well, I didn't, want, yeah. I didn't want to say, yeah, let's spend $46,000 and all of a sudden they come back next week and say, or two weeks later and say, oh, well, guess what? That's why we're trying to break it down the best we can because then we'll... That's turned into 146000 because we can't put it on any of our towers. Well, we know you're, you say that Phil's tower would probably work wonderful right now because he can talk places everybody else can. Yeah. But it'd be nice if we could get a bit more height. That's, that's right. right. That's just something yeah. we could look to if we could add height. If you're going to spend that much money, you might as well get it to where you know how to get it better. Yeah, if we can get it up higher, we'll get it higher now. But if we could temporarily still go ahead and get it on Phil's tower, who's to say we can't? Change it to a Verizon tower that possibly can work somewhere else in another well, location. Yes. Yeah. 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 It can't be. Yeah, because the tower is not costing nothing. The tower is paid for. It. 
Yeah, and paid for years. <laughs> and so you put it on a tower here, it got set up, and a year later you wanted to move it to a different tower site, then uh, what would have to be done is called a license modification. It's no big deal. I mean, you're, it's not like there's a huge range difference. They do a, there's a cost to that, not a huge cost. It's just license modification. Once that's done, then you can move it to the other tower site. So, that wouldn't be a huge deal. No. I'm just going to skip on the tower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to think. I, I was going to volunteer that one. Uh, it just depends on what kind of mood it was, and then if David can do it, then we can just go. He can get back up, guy. I'm pulling the seniority card here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's on the quote then is something that you would use whether no matter where the power that's right. is. That's all actually all required. What could change, you know, a little bit on here is the I've got uh, you know, six hundred feet of the coax, which found height that could change a little bit. It could be it could end up being a little less than that. That's based on figuring a three hundred foot tire, so Bill, do you know the guide points on that tower, where all three of them are, do you have property beyond that in each direction, in all those directions? One goes across the street. Oh, that's good. On the other side, I mean, it sits on the other side of exchange, and then one's off to the south one. Do you know if there's much property beyond um, that? We, can, be we can probably go a little bit further to the south and just be <laughs> in an agreement with uh, the You'd have to be able to go equal in all three directions, so, you know, so what, you, you think you'd go 50 foot in each direction maybe? Or? That's what this probably is. 50 foot, 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 foot on the other side there. there. Um, yeah. Everybody just ought to take the drive down to the camp shop. I'm going to go down and look at it. I'll go down and look at it. It's got a ground floor. Yeah. You're trying to figure out what some of that stuff is. They could probably could if they move the guys a little bit or something. Okay. In the regular fire budget? Or where would it take one to take this one out of? Where are you looking at? Your reserve? Well, we thought about reserve. We thought about the reserve. If we had it in this year's budget, then we're not, if it was still doable within this year's budget, ideally that would be the place to go. And the remainder of this year's budget. So would you want to do the the bottom quote? No, 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 the top quote. The top quote. Kenwood gave me that just to, mainly so that in case you were curious what it would cost to have the different repeater, which is this this 800 rather than the 810 models. They already have all the trunking firmware, hardware, software, all that built into them for trunking. Otherwise, if you decide to go trunking later than with this one you would have to add external controllers and such and it would make more sense if you were thinking about doing trunking later to do this. But I just can't see any reason to do trunking. There. But That's it's an trunk. advantage for you to explain yeah. trunking. Yeah. What, 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 the way trunking works basically is you have a control channel and well first of all right now the way it would be with five conventional repeaters not doing trunking each let's say each entity a fire EMS would have their own repeater and they would always talk through that repeater. The way trunking works is, depending on how busy the system is, the repeater that you would normally talk on, if that repeater is busy, it automatically steers your, all your radio, sends out unaudible signals to your radios in milliseconds, telling them switch to this repeater because it's available because yours is. So it, it, it makes a dynamic efficiency of the system. It just switches between yeah, and allows more talk groups. And that's another thing with the digital without even doing trunking. You can have several individual group IDs talking groups. So let's say you three guys want to be able to talk on this system with radios just between yourselves and not here, have anybody else hear you. You assign you guys your own group ID and nobody else 
over here. We can't do that. Okay. <laughs> 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 so not everybody in there. So on the trunking, the commissioners have secret channels. <laughs> so on the trunking, then another, another thing is, is that let's say one of the repeaters <laughs> fails yeah. Yeah. now the system. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, it doesn't just kill it. You know, communications on. I mean, the, the system knows that one's down, yeah, so it steers the users to other repeaters so they can talk, so they haven't lost communication. So yeah, there's a few advantages, but nothing. Not for the money. Not for the money. Not for nothing huge. If you had a thousand radios with that in the county, I would say go trunk. Okay, have three hundred forty-nine thousand in their reserve fund, and their regular budget they're at one hundred twenty-one. Remaining. Remaining. Yeah. yeah. That's really I thought we had one. We're going to be careful this year. So I mean, we I'd rather take this out of our general budget this year and just it, give it, our reserve alone. Yeah, if we can. Well, I would like to take it out of the out of the general. Um, like for all the reserve one this year if we can. Should be one of that I think we got to change. Yeah, we got to change all up for repair. And <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 I think we're all right. So we're good to go? Okay. All right, I'll make a motion. We enter in this contract with RSI Communications and Security for radios at $46,240.16. Let's look at that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. It's for the repeaters, right? Not radios. Or, yeah, right. I'm going to call it the main infrastructure. Or the repeaters. So that'd be what we call it. Main. Motion is trying to to go ahead and approve this contract with RSI Communications for the main infrastructure. For forty-six thousand two hundred forty dollars and sixteen cents. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. And I will have a voucher for this year. Right. Mike, I need that voucher as quickly as I can. <laughs> well, he can give you that and you can voucher yeah, it out. Yeah, we can voucher it out. And you will have a voucher for your radio. This year. I need a voucher as quick as we can, sir. Yeah, yeah, give me on a receipt for my deal back so I can make you one. Do I have it? This? Oh, yeah. Nope. Oh, that's the big one. Someone wants it. Yeah, pretty good. Sure. Um, is there a certain line that you want to pull this out of? That's up to you guys. We'll visit with the actual meeting. What? We'll visit with the actual commission meeting. And I'm back to the storm policy for the courthouse. I'm about ready to wrap that up. Looks like Nita's vault's going to be the most secure place in this building. The only hurdles I, I did, matter of fact, I'm so, I just had to have an order emergency light sport. Two of them that automatically come on if the power goes out. So I'll have one downstairs and one upstairs. Uh, my problem is, is, is any, do you know, is there a way that we'll, they can call in the phone system in the courthouse like the sheriff's office and notify every office? You know, the phone system does that. I don't well, know who's in charge mm -hmm. of We'd have to check we'd with Chuck. Yeah. Could you check on that? Because that's something, you know, the sheriff's office would need, like, you know, if a tornado warning came out, so they can just pick up the phone, because, you know, they're busy yeah, at that time. But we'd ring every phone in the courthouse so they notify everybody in the courthouse to take shelter. So the sheriff could call all the phones. They should be able to pick up dial one extension and ring every phone. I'll check. We have a small There's system a in the city also there, that but right I can hit one button and ring every phone. That There's some sort of intercom. Yeah. We've done that before. You get on and it'll go to okay. all the phones. Well, that's one of the things I've got to figure out to write into this deal. So that's okay. the only time that's going to be an issue is if we have like a jury trial or a large motion day. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to be, we could be hitting. Fast max and capacity, but for a few seconds, I imagine people aren't going to mind standing on the stairwell inside well, that vault. Well, you can go further down too. Yeah, I'm saying using both Chose levels. To. Does that mean I have, have to, to clean it out. You might have to clean it up just a tad. Have you been down there? Yeah, remember I went down there. That's not my nothing. stuff down there. It's like 500 years ago. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I can probably find you some trustees from the jail. Yeah, on the Every second floor of her vault, <laughs> in the basement of her vault. We'll, we'll supervise them, you know, in 16. <laughs> but anyhow, so I'll probably have that here in the next little while. I just got those little bucks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, well, we're, we're, yeah. Thank, Thank you, Jason. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for a uh, Pat, yeah. short little executive session. Good. Yeah, yeah. Ten minutes. Uh, I'm going to throw that one away anyhow. Not elected personnel. Subject matter. Personnel. 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 Disciplinary action. Personal I make a motion we go in the executive session for 10 minutes to discuss non elected personnel. Yeah. All of us in the role player chiefs. Okay, we have a motion to second to the second session of non elected personnel for 10 minutes to include fire chiefs and Doug and commissioners in the meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Do we have a, an agenda for the department head meeting? An agenda? Yeah, I mean, is it, are we talking? Are we, well, there was employee, we're talking employee handbook. What was the employee handbook? And I have told department heads that they have issues. Yeah, that'd be, I didn't know if they'd been told to review it. If they have, yes, they have questions told. or things they'd like to change, that'd be a good time to bring that up. They've been told, and Joe has a copy because there's some FMLA stuff he needs to address. Well, that'd so. be the main item on the agenda. They all know. Is there anything else we need to discuss with you, Mark? That was the main topic. <coughs> uh, anything else? I don't have anything.